So today we're going to talk about um, another topic in the series of um, lectures on the nervous system. So today we're going to address the um, very important and pertinent subject of opioid analgesics, a drug which is commonly used in the wards, especially for the management of pain. Because we know that there are many complaints that patient can come and present with to the clinic or to the hospital. And one of the, besides having complaining of cough and fever and runny nose, they can also complain of pain. And pain is, is one of the most important complaints that a patient can present with, which we need to know how to address in the correct way. So when a patient comes with pain, of course the first line of treatment is if the pain is mild, then we might want to start with a paracetamol. And then we can add an NSAID a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug such as ibuprofen, indomethacine and others and if co combining an paracetamol or acetaminophen and with an NSAID does not work then we might want to consider eventually starting them on opioids. So our learning objectives for today is to be able to describe the mechanism of action of opioid analgesics, to be able to name a few commonly prescribed opioids, to be able to mention the common indications for opioids and also to understand the common unwanted effects of opioids. So the opioids, when we talk about opioids, we usually refer to either the natural opiates or the semi-synthetic alkaloids. So this is the opium, um, the poppy plant and from the poppy plant we can um, we can derive or you can get the the natural um, opiates okay. from this um, milky um, substance you can you can process this and you can get um, heroin, morphine and other opiates. And then, but nowadays, most of the time, we our opioids um, come from the synthetic um, sources. So we can synthesize them in the lab, in the factories, and you can get opioids. And then we also, be ha besides having the opiate and opioid, we also have um, opioid peptides, which are the um, the natural opioids, the endogenous opioids that are produced um, in the body. So basically, when we talk about opioids, we are usually referring to opiates and opioid peptides plus all the synthetic um, opioids that we have. So this is from CatZoom. So when you talk about opioids, it, it, basically we can divide them into three main categories. The opioid agonists, you can have the strong opioids, and then the moderate opioid agonists, and also the weak opioid agonists. So an example of a strong opioid is morphine and methadone. A moderate agonist will be codeine and oxycodone. And then for the weak one, maybe we don't have to bother too much. And then we have the mixed agonist antagonist opioids, such as propranophin. And then we have the opioid antagonists, such as naloxone and naltrexone. These two are very important life-saving drugs that can be used to reverse the effects of the agonist. So in cases of toxicity with the 
the other, especially the, the agonist of opioids, like morphine, methadone, so you can reverse the effects by giving naloxone. So you can classify them at least into three ways. You can classify the opioids by looking at the spectrum of clinical use. You can divide them according to the strength of the analgesia given by those opioids, whether it's strong or weak or moderate. And you can also classify them according to the ratio of agonist to antagonist effects. A little bit about the pharmacokinetics of the opioids, the opioid analgesics. So in talk about absorption and distribution, it's a drug that is widely distributed to body tissues. It can cross the placental barrier and may cause respiratory depression in the fetus. And with prolonged exposure, we can develop neonates, can develop physical dependence. So always bear in mind that sometimes the obstetrics, um, especially in the delivery room, in the labor room, sometimes um, doctors might order. In some places, they give um, pethidine for as a painkiller to the mother. And so far, so when the baby is delivered, um, you need to give naloxone to reverse the effects of um, the opioid that has crossed the placental barrier. So you don't want to cause respiratory depression in the new the fetus. So you you can give um, naloxone to reverse the effects of the opioid analgesics. So mostly, when you talk about metabolism of opioids, they're metabolized. By liver enzymes, okay, they're metabolized by liver enzymes to an inactive glucuronide conjugate. Okay, so opioids are metabolized by liver enzymes, and then they become inactive glucuronide conjugates, and eventually they will be eliminated in the kidney. But sometimes they can be um, like morphine, for example. Um, it has metabolites, so it can you can get morphine six glucuronide, which has analgesic activity equivalent to morphine. And then you can have morphine three glucuronide, which is neuroexcitatory. So bear in mind that some opioids have metabolites, active metabolites, and therefore you might need to consider this when choosing a drug when. When in giving when when you decide to give some patient an, a patient an opioid, so you have to decide whether and you have to bear in mind whether that drug has a, has a metabolite or not. Because if it has a met metabolites which are active, then you might not want to give a prolonged infusion. And if you give a prolonged infusion with that, that opioid, you have to bear in mind that the of course the half life will be longer. So it will be a context sensitive half life so it can the half life will prolong with the with the duration of the of the of the infusion so in summary of the pharmacokinetics of the of the opioids so just pay attention to the just this is just a comparison of the various types of opioids and the uh, elimination half-life for example so we know that remifentanil has a short elimination half-life of about 5 to 14 minutes whereas methadone can it's very variable can be 50 to 4500 minutes okay that's so many hours or days and then in clearance the clearance are Nothing is really um, starkingly different. So yeah, except maybe methadone has a lower clearance of 2.4 mils per kg per minute. And with regard to the volume of distribution, um, they are about, almost about the same. Not not that much. It's, it varies between 0.2 for fentanyl up to 4 liters per milligram for fentanyl. The protein binding. Okay, there is a variation from 8 
for hydromorphone to up to um, 96 to for buprenorphin. The with regards to the lipophilicity, um, it's it ranges from 0.6 for codeine. It's very not lipophilic, and the most lipophilic will be sulfentanil. And pay attention to the clinical onset of action in minutes. So you can see that alfentanil and remifentanil both has a very fast onset of action of only one minute. And this is followed by fentanyl two to three minutes and then sufentanil two minutes and buprenorphine two to five minutes. And when you talk about the active metabolites, so you have to be aware of the fact that buprenorphine, codeine, hydromorphone, morphine, oxycodone, pethidine, sufentanil, all of them, all these drugs have um, active metabolites. So this is a picture taken from the internet um, showing fentanyl in its injection form in a vial. So you have to break the vial before you can give uh, an injection of fentanyl. And then this is the fentanyl um, patch transdermal system. You can you can give this sometimes and you are probably some of you will be asked one day to give this you need to patch this on someone for example with um, cancer pain so so this is this is the fentanyl patch so this is an opioid so you can uh, you have to be careful of this and be aware of the fact that this is an opioid so the mechanism of action you can talk about the mechanism of action with, refer with reference to the receptors and you can talk about them in terms of opioid peptides and also you can talk about the mechanism of action in terms of ionic mechanisms 